Call of Gracing said they were going to shock the world, and this is a little shocking. So a couple months ago, Call of Racing president Chris Rice said that they were going to shock the world with their NASCAR Cup Series signings. And honestly, Daniel Hemrick is not a shock the world signing. But maybe, just maybe, he got confused and he meant that their Xfinity Series signing would shock the world. Because Jordan Bianchi on this week's Athletic Podcast, where they're recapping the 2023 season, said, quote, said, if where Josh Williams ends up is true, he must have sold a lot of t-shirts. And now it appears that Josh Williams will be headed to Call Racing in 2024 to their Xfinity program, running a full-time season in one of their two, at least two full-time cars. That's a big upgrade for Josh Williams, who spent last season and prior seasons racing for DGM Racing in the Xfinity Series in the number 92 car, number 36. He's bounced around a lot of those mid-tier cars and teams, and he's had decent success at times. In 2023, he had six top tens. His average finish did increase one position over his average start, which is always something you like to see right there. In 2020, he had six top tens as well, racing for DGM. The guy can get a, the car to the finish. He runs pretty clean races, and sometimes, you know, NASCAR makes him mad. He has to take things into his own hand, and like he did at Atlanta earlier this year, where he famously parked his car on the start-finish line in the middle of the race, uh, during a caution period, thankfully, got out, walked across the infield, threw up the peace sign, yelled at a NASCAR official saying, what are they going to do? Find me. I don't have the money to pay for it. And then famously gave his little hard hands and sold a bunch of t-shirts, a Dale Jr. amount of t-shirts when it gets right down to it. So Josh Williams turns out might actually be pretty good at marketing. His sponsor got a ton of exposure for that, which I believe was a local HVAC company in Atlanta, or at least an AC company. So they made out huge right there. That was great exposure for them. But for Josh Williams, moving up to Colleague, assuming that's what happens, the team does have an announcement scheduled for Thursday of this week uh, on the 17th to make further announcements. 16th. 17th would be Friday, uh, on 16th, Thursday of this week, to make further announcements about their future plans for 2024. And I'll get into that in just a second because I think we can all piece together what's going to happen here. But Josh Williams moving over to Cog is a major step up in performance for him, right? Every driver now we talk about that kind of floats around that mid-tier that doesn't have a big-time sponsor or a ton of family money behind them ends up having to maybe take a chance on themselves, right? We've seen Ryan Priest do it, John Hunter Nemechek, and others have done it in recent years where they've maybe downgraded or they've taken and tried to scrap all of their money together to put themselves into a car that they think can win races and then try to prove themselves in the hopes that a team ends up hiring them based off of talent alone. And it seems like Josh Williams might be in that situation right there. I have heard that he has a very loyal sponsor behind him that's helping him get into uh, this, this opportunity. And for him, he goes to go out there and try to prove what he can do. It feels a lot like Landon Castle in 2022 with Colleg Racing as well before his Voyager sponsorship you know, dried up and he wasn't able to continue on into 2023. So for Josh, Starting off with Cog in the Xfinity Series in 2024 is a massive step up over where he was. The expectations are a lot higher. Do we ex expect him to win a race? Is that going to be the expectation? Not necessarily, because we've seen Daniel Hemrick be in that car and not win a race either, but he still got promoted to the Cup Series, which is, you know, more on the money than it is on the performance. Not that he's been bad by any means, but Cog's Xfinity program definitely took a step back in 2023 from where it was in 2022. It'll be interesting to see what kind of speed they bring because the team has met, uh, you know, some financial road bumps over the last 12 months or so. And I don't know if that's going to clear up going into 2024 just yet. So let's talk about Cog as a whole going into 2024, though. Um, right now, their Cup Series program, AJ Allmendinger is stepping down from the Cup Series. He'll be racing full-time in the Xfinity Series uh, alongside Josh Williams. We can just go ahead and assume that he'll likely be in the 16 car and Josh will likely be in the 11 car in the Xfinity Series. That 10 car will more than likely continue on as an all-star car, uh, barring somebody bringing a big budget and buying out the entire season for that. But fully expect AJ Allmendinger to be in the 16 Xfinity car, Josh Williams to be in the 11 Xfinity car, and that is one of the most interesting duos on the grid. Easily the best hair duo on the grid as well. AJ's got great hair, Josh has got a mullet going, which is very NASCAR-esque of him. And then in the Cup Series, we will have Ty Dillon replacing AJ Allmendinger in that number 16 car, and then Daniel Hemrick replacing the departing Justin Haley. 
JJ Haley, in the number 31 car and going full-time there as well. So Colleg in 2024 will have four full-time teams across NASCAR's Xfinity Series and Cup Series. Three of those teams will all be driver-funded, meaning the driver brings a sponsor along with them more often than not. And then AJ Allmendinger, of course, will be paid by the team. He's a hired driver to race for the team. He gets a paycheck from the team. He does not bring the amount of money that the other guys do, if any at all. So Ty Dillon is definitely coming along, taking over AJ's seat in the number 16 car, and he's bringing money from his Ferris backing and his other sponsors that he has as well. And that is something that Colleg had made pretty clear, maybe not publicly, at least to the media, but behind the scenes that they were looking for drivers with funding. They were willing to take on paid drivers right now. And for a team that has this whole moniker of trophy hunting, again, they've run into some financial hurdles over the last 12 months, not pertaining necessarily to the race team, but as the Colleg empire overall, that things you know had to take a back seat and trophy hunting is one of those things for right now. Although we fully expect AJ Allmendinger to be out there trophy hunting in the Xfinity Series and contending to make it into that championship four next year at Phoenix. But for the rest of Colleg, Ty Dillon, everybody talks about this, right? He, this is now going to be his third team in the last three years. He's just not good. He doesn't have any wins. A lot of what Ty Dillon, unfortunately, has fallen victim to is how bad the cars are in the teams that he's joining, right? Obviously, he joined Petty GMS in 2022, and that team immediately, you know, changes. They become, they become Legacy Motor Club. He gets dropped for them. They replace him with Noah Gragson and the teammate to Eric Jones. The whole thing right there. Well, the merger, then all of that happening. Uh, so they all, he's on the outside. Unfortunate for him. And granted, his teammate and Eric Jones looked great. But starting up a second car and, you know, having the GMS side of things try to get going, not an ideal situation for him. He then goes over to Spire, who's now running two full-time cars, and they have run two full-time cars before, but that 7 car definitely seemed to get more than what the 77 car was getting. And granted, Carson Hosovar ran really well in his starts in that car, and that's not to say that he, not I shouldn't say starts, his start in that 7 car, let me apologize for that, and he looked really impressive, but again, that seven car seemed to be getting more performance and maybe better things than what that 77 car was getting. And now he moves over to the 16 car at Colleg. And I would say that the 16 and 31 are pretty much on par with one another, more weekends than not, in the Cup Series. Of course, when they get to the road courses, A.J. Allmendinger is better than Justin Haley. Justin did hold his own at the Chicago road course, and he's been decent at other tracks as well. But for the most part, those cars are pretty on par with one another. So it'll be interesting to see what exactly goes on there with Ty Dillon, uh, which I honestly feel like this has got to be his last stop without a prove-it type of year. Daniel Hemrick, of course, moves up to the Cup Series next year. He brings along sponsorship from Circle and a couple of his other partners, which again, like I said, uh, three of those four cars are all funded by the driver that is in that seat. So, call racing. They've got big changes coming. I know everybody's going to rag on them that Ty Dillon isn't a better driver than A.J. Allmendinger. I don't think anyone's disputing that. Uh, but again, it comes down to money and it comes down to the financial stability of this team and they need it right now. So maybe they're going to weather the storm for a year, two years. We'll see what happens from there. But what we do know is that is more than likely their lineup. Chris Rice said that they will like, not likely, that they will have an announcement of some sort uh, this month on Thursday. And now that I'm thinking of it, Thursday is the 16th. It makes total sense. Well, I don't know why I said the 17th. Definitely the 16th. So make sure you guys tune in for that. But for now, Josh Williams appears to be moving up um, in that Xfinity Series class level. He's gone from that lower middle class to now being like, he, he's pretty upper middle class now. If not, if not up into that 1%, maybe, almost. We'll see what happens. But like and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on TikTok at BreakHard, Instagram and Twitter at BreakHardBlog.